Hi, Peter here from Wonderstruck. Now, since we produced our video about the difference between flux spinning and the Meissner effect, we've had literally three or four people point out to us that when we were demonstrating the flux pinning, we were holding the magnet above the superconductor as the superconductor chilled down past its critical temperature. Now, they've asked us, what happens if you actually chill the superconductor first and then place the magnet on top of it? And well, we're nothing if not responsive to the needs of our subscribers, so we thought that's a decent question. We'll give it a go. OK, so what we have here is a sample of superconductor. Now, the superconductor itself is only a very thin layer on the surface of this little pill-shaped thing. Now, when we cool this down below its critical temperature, if there's a magnet in situ above it, some of the field lines are basically trapped within the superconductor. Now, a type 2 superconductor, when it's chilled below its critical temperature, its tendency is to expel field lines from within it. So in the Meissner effect, if you're using a solid lump of type 2 superconductor, if you place the magnet on top of the superconductor as it chills down, the uh, field lines will be expelled as it cools and the magnet will lift off of the surface and balance on top. But it's very weak, you can easily knock it off. Now with flux pinning, you use a very thin layer of type 2 superconductor so that when it cools down, some of the field lines are expelled, but some of them are trapped within defects in the very thin layer of superconductor. And that causes a very strong um, levitation effect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cool this down with a bit of liquid nitrogen and we're going to let it get below its critical temperature and then try and balance a magnet on top of it. Now this as I said is a thin layer of superconductor. Now I suspect what's going to happen is that as it cools down the tendency to expel the field lines is going to mean when we add the magnet afterwards it's not going to be able to uh, to levitate above it. It's going to keep falling off. But let's give it a go. OK, the nitrogen around the superconductor now has stopped boiling. So we know that the superconductor is now at the same temperature as the nitrogen. So it's below its critical temperature. Now let's try to add a magnet on top of the superconductor and see if we can get it to levitate. Now you can actually feel there's a very strong, it feels like repulsive force, but obviously it's not really repulsive, it's just caused by the field lines being deflected around the superconductor. Now that does not feel stable, as soon as I let go, yes, it's gonna ping off. Let's try again. No. No, it really doesn't want to actually levitate above it. And there is quite a strong, so you can see it can move the super, superconductor around. Now this is not repulsion in the sense of two like poles. This is repulsion because the field lines from the magnet are being pushed out of the superconductor. So there we go. So in answer to your question, if we cool the superconductor first and then try to put the magnet on top, it doesn't work. 